At 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning, happening today, a former president is just hours away from being arraigned in a D.C. courtroom. The indictment of Donald Trump handed down earlier this week for his alert role in trying to overturn the 2020 election. The president was surrounded by a group of crackpot lawyers that kept telling him what his itching ears wanted to hear. We're live at the courthouse this morning with what to expect from the court proceeding. Jackie, how are we looking? Yeah, it's another dry and quiet start out there, but we could be dealing with a few spotty showers or storms later on today. Uh, more details and timing coming up. Plus, well, using social media to distribute fake pills. The warning this morning from the Drug Enforcement Administration. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, at 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. It's a very dry start as we track some potential rain showers that might be heading our way on this very, very cloudy and hazy start. And what we're seeing on it's almost Friday, which I'm very, very thankful for, too. Amen. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey James. Good morning. I'm Tosa Tequila. Happy Friday Eve. Lex is in for Shanika this morning talking traffic. It's a busy time on the roads. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackie is talking weather, and we should see some activity in the weather department today. Is that yes. right? Yeah, later on today, thinking closer towards the evening commute, uh, closer towards D.C., or even a little bit after that. Farther back out towards the west, we could be seeing a few showers and thunderstorms popping up mid to late afternoon. But let's talk about satellite and radar, though, out there right now. We are seeing the setup with that high pressure continue to exit its way off towards the north and east. And that was keeping us uh, quiet over the last several days and also keeping us with the lower humidity. We are seeing some more shower and thunderstorm activity starting to pick up back out towards our south and west. We'll be watching for a few of those to pop up closer to home. We're thinking right around the I-81 corridor by mid to late afternoon, right around the 3 p.m. time frame. Temperatures, though, out there right now, not quite as cool as yesterday morning. You're seeing quite a few locations starting off in the 60s right around 70 in DC just a little bit warmer out there this morning that humidity though still on the comfortable side but this will start to pick up too more details coming up uh, Lex is here in for Shanika I almost tossed over to Shanika but she's not here how's yes. we got there this morning always <laughs> here in our hearts though okay we're taking a look now we're coming on six o'clock coming up to uh, rush hour traffic in the mornings we can see there are pretty good but there are a few areas of concern for drivers one of those is actually on the Beltway, There's both the inner and outer loop, you can see lots of red here, and that is continuing to stretch. There was an accident. You can see there a lot of congestion, and I'll have more on that coming up. All right, let's thank you. Time right now is 602. A quick look at your know and go headlines this morning. First, former College Park Mayor Patrick Woyon facing 30 years in prison after pleading guilty to 140 counts of child pornography. Those charges include counts of possession, distribution, and intent to distribute. And Fairfax and Prince William County leaders are pushing to propose a ban that will stop panhandling. They want to stop the exchange of items between people and cars and pedestrians. Now, supporters argue that panhandling leads to police incidents. Opponents claim the ban infringes on First Amendment rights. And happening this weekend, Beyonce performing right here in the DMV and Metro wants you to keep in mind FedEx Field is a 30 minute walk from Morgan Boulevard Station. The last silver and blue line trains will leave the station around 1230 in the morning on Saturday. Trains stop running an hour earlier on Sunday. All right, it is 6.03 and former President Donald Trump preparing for his arraignment at a D.C. courthouse this afternoon. Yeah, Trump was indicted on federal charges earlier this week. D.C. News Now's Randy Bass is live at the courthouse this morning. And Randy, what can we expect from today's court proceedings? Yeah, Corey Tosin, good morning. The former president expected to arrive here at the D.C. courthouse in several hours ahead of his arraignment this afternoon. That's expected to get underway this afternoon around 4 o'clock. Mind you, this federal courthouse right here in D.C. just steps away from the U.S. Capitol. And the Capitol really at the center of the charges the president is facing this morning, facing four criminal charges, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, along with conspiracy against rights. He is expected to plead not guilty to all four of those charges. He maintains no wrongdoing in association with both the election and the Capitol insurrection on January 6. He maintains that the election was stolen from him. However, there has been no evidence to suggest that that was actually the case. Prosecutors say he worked alongside half a dozen uncharged co-conspirators as they tried to stop the January 6 certification of those votes and undo the results of the election altogether. Special Counsel Jack Smith is leading the investigation. He had this today to say when the indictment was handed down Tuesday. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021 was an unprecedented assault 
on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government. Today's arraignment here in D.C. likely to be similar to what we saw earlier this year in both New York and Florida, where Trump faces other charges. The former president today likely to be brought in through a more private entrance. We're not expecting the president to be paraded in front of reporters and media out here in front of the courthouse this morning. Special counsel Jack Smith also saying Tuesday after the indictment was handed down, he's looking for a speedy trial in this case, but it's not clear if that will actually get underway or wrap up even before the start of the 2024 election. In Northwest, I'm Randy Bass. Back to you. Randy, thank you. While Trump's indictment is making national headlines, it's also hitting home for many men and women in law enforcement here. Yeah, the indictment has local implications as some D.C. police officers responded and defended the Capitol during the January 6th insurrection. Two of the most outspoken officers who still deal with the trauma from that day released statements after the indictment. U.S. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn said, quote, all I have wanted from day one is accountability and justice for the law enforcement men and women who fought bravely on January 6th. Former D.C. police officer Michael Fanon said, quote, it disgusts me that House Republicans are heinously coming to the defense of Trump's criminal behavior while putting up the foundation of our democracy as collateral. People are our friends, our neighbors. They represent those who protect us every day. And it is extremely important uh, to stand up to them. If Donald Trump is not held accountable, then our democracy is in grave peril. Now that's after those hundreds of police officers suffered physical and mental injuries on January 6th. Today, D.C. police will work with Secret Service to keep the former president and the public safe as Trump makes his way to court. And this latest indictment is the third against former President Donald Trump. You might remember he was the first indicted back in New York by a grand jury in March. Now that case alleges Trump falsified business records in connection to hush money payments made to an adult film actress during his 2016 campaign. A trial is set for that case next March. Then in June, a federal grand jury in Florida charged the former president with violating the Espionage Act. That is after Trump allegedly hoarded classified documents in his Mar-a-Lago home. That trial is scheduled for next May. And lastly, the latest indictment handed down earlier this week alleges Trump and his team worked to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Meantime, another grand jury is weighing possible charges against Trump for working to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. A decision on that case is expected sometime this summer. And for the latest on these cases and today's court hearing, visit us online at dcnewsnow.com. Just use the word search Trump in the search bar on the top right corner of your screen. It will help you find the most up-to-date articles on this story. The time right now, 608, and great news for drivers this morning. All of the George Washington Memorial Parkway is back open. It fully reopened yesterday. The National Park Service says since Saturday, crews worked to remove more than 250 trees that fell along the parkway. Meantime, Arlington National Cemetery also set to reopen today. The cemetery closed earlier this week due to storm damage. All right, some bad news. If you rely on the Mark train in Laurel, the station will be closed for 10 weeks starting Monday, August 21st. Now, crews are replacing the station's platforms, the stairs, and the ramps. The station is expected to reopen sometime in October. And if you plan on heading to see Beyonce this weekend at FedEx Field, here's a reminder from Ramada. The agency wants you to keep in mind FedEx Field is a 30-minute walk from Morgan Boulevard Station. Metro also says for Saturday's show, the last Silver Line train will take off at 1234 a.m. and the last Blue Line train will leave at 1227 a.m. The agency says both lines will leave an hour earlier on Sunday. 609 Patrick Woyon, former mayor of College Park, pleads guilty to 140 counts of child pornography. Although he faces 150 years, he will only have to serve 30. Woyon was arrested and charged in March after resigning from his position as mayor. The pornography charges include counts of possession, distribution, and intent to distribute. Further police investigation revealed Woyan was using an account, a kick account, to send dozens of child pornography videos. Police say they also found several devices with video on them. It's honestly not fair to the people, you know, the children that's been affected by this because he's supporting such a horrible black market of child, you know, endangerment and pornography. How are you a leader in position of power charged with that much and that horrible thing? 
Woyan is scheduled to be sentenced in November. All right, with several class action lawsuits recently settled right now, consumers want to make sure if they were on that settlement case to get the money they deserve. Yeah, DC News Now's anchor consumer reporter Ben Dennis is highlighting the settlement claims that you can cash in on during this month. Well, from calls you may have received despite being on that do not call list to one social media platform allegedly trying to track your location without your approval, lawsuits settled in court can offer impact to consumers' money. And we're looking into those claims with deadlines this month in order to get you cash. Only 9% of people file a claim to get cash available to them from class action lawsuits. That's according to a lengthy study in 2019 from the Federal Trade Commission. With that in mind, consumers have until the end of the month to go online, share their contact information, and submit a claim for a chunk of what DirecTV and Facebook's parent company Meta agreed to pay. Facebook's parent company Meta settled after claims they sold user data to third parties. You may have heard of this lawsuit. Anyone who had an account from May 24, 2007 to December 22nd of last year filed a claim by August 25th. Meta also allegedly took users' IP address information to infer user locations, even if Apple and Android location services were off from January 30th, 2015 to April 18th, 2018. File a claim by August 11th, and DirecTV is accused of coordinating telemarketing calls to people on the Do Not Call registry. Around 114,000 numbers are associated. File a claim by August the 7th. Now note, though a company may settle claims, it doesn't legally mean an admission of guilt. To find websites where to file a claim, visit topclassactions.com. Ben Dennis, DC News Now.